Amen. Glory be to God. Welcome everybody. I'm glad to see those of you who are battling through the storm. I welcome those of you who are out there listening in uh, internet land, in the virtual. Uh, we've been here singing, tuning ourselves in. And let me be frank and clear. Uh, we know it takes a whole lot more today to believe than it did in yesterday. We know that all the trials and tribulations and set of afflictions that are only meant to test us, not to defeat us, those things which will make things appear more difficult. Let that be said that that is the test that should make you call on the Father. Somebody say amen. See, because, you know, God asked us, and I'm going to pray this quickly so that I can go ahead and get right into his word, because today I want us to think about a fresh start. A fresh start. See, it don't matter how many times you fail or fall. It does matter if you get back up again. Somebody believe that, say amen. Amen, amen. So the Bible in Philippians 4 and 8 tells us, I'm going to get my glasses here so I can read scripture. It says to fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable, wonderfully positive things. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Amen? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, just be with us as we rightly disseminate your word and remind ourselves of what your word promises. Let it be not that we think of the Bible and then don't open it up and find out the protections therein, Lord God, how your love and how your grace and your mercy are going to be sufficient even in spite of all that we see and think and do, Lord God. But it is still useful for the reproof of how we live and how we believe, Lord God. So let us search it today to find the faith required to be able to do greater works in you in spite of what our eyes may see and our emotions may feel, Lord God. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise for the help of the comforter which you promised would come that is here present with us today, Lord God. Let us learn how to effectively use it. For in your words, you said the effective fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much, and that we do believe, Lord God. So we give your name glory, we give your name honor, and we do praise your holy name. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I, I, I want, I'm just, just real into right now talking about victory in Jesus. I, I, I don't know nothing else, you know, and, and, and trust me, uh, I'm just like you. Uh, I go through the same things you go through. Uh, I have the same fears that I must overcome. I have the same thoughts that I must bring into submission to God's word, that put under obedience to the word of God. I have the same uh, things that affect me from other people as you. I have the same, I live in the same place, so I'm under the same conditions of government. I'm under the same conditions of health. I'm under the same things and going through the same things that you do. In spite of it all, I look to God's word and I look for strength, spiritual power. I look for victory in that word, for that is what the word is made for. Somebody say amen. amen. So today when I start talking about a fresh start, I'm talking about something I learned from a, a, another pastor about thinking yourself to victory. See, see, one of the things I do realize is when, when say, Joel Osteen teaches me or you something about something his daddy taught him who had a daddy who taught him. See, somebody who trying to lead some ought to be able to follow. See, see, I'm afraid of somebody trying to lead me and ain't never followed nobody. See, what makes me fear that that is a wholesome fear because I need to understand that you're leading me in the truth. 
See, God says in his word, even without a preacher or a teacher, that if I read it, that the word of God can set me free. It says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And liberty is another word for freedom. And many times we are yoked by a personal tragedy or a personal challenge or a personal emotion that's a negative thing that just bears down on us, it places us in bondage, it, it yokes on us, and it rides with us. And the Bible also teaches, that's why I'm saying we ought to go to the Bible for a fresh start, because the Bible teaches, so a man thinker, so is he. So I know some of the things we've been thinking ain't who we are, but it's who we be. Now, I ain't trying to be funny with English, but I'm saying, you could be somebody else, but think different than who you are, and that's who you become. You get me? See, I can be already a, a blessed child. I can have everything God intended for me. But yet, I think I'm nothing, and that's what I will be. Nothing. See, it's even like this. If you don't think you're going to make it, you won't. If you don't think you're going to stand, you won't. If you tell yourself, and the word is there to help you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So all of a sudden, even if I didn't think it was going to be me to get me through, I can believe that Christ is going to get me through. Somebody say amen. amen. So this is where I'm coming from my perspective spiritually when I'm talking about thinking yourself to victory. Yes. See, everybody wakes up and says, oh, I don't feel like going to work this morning. Oh, uh, I hope my kids act right. Oh, I hope my spouses don't do what I want her to do, him to do. Uh, they, they think about, uh, uh, what am I going to do if I lose my job? These negative thoughts have a way of making your day bad. However you start out your day is pretty much how it's going to be that day. And the scriptures tell us that, it says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us, me and you, rejoice and be what? Glad in it. So see, what I'm really realizing is that my thoughts, your thoughts can trick us. They can tell us something is going on that really isn't going on. You, it can tell you you're failing and really you're failing. Yes, yes. It can be really, it can be telling you you're falling and can't get up and really you're already above everything and don't realize it so that's why you think you're down. The mind is a terrible thing to play tricks on. So, uh, it's, you know, our minds are like control centers. Every decision we make controls every action that we do. Amen? Amen. Okay, so uh, our thoughts are largely going to determine the direction of our life. Uh, if, if I think I'm going to go to work and work real hard, and when I get off work, I'm going to get paid, that's probably going to happen. Amen. Amen? And if it don't happen, I'm going to probably have a problem with it. Amen? But if I don't go to work and they say they're not going to pay, I'm probably not going to argue with them. Amen? Because if I argue with them, I might not have a job. But I'm not going to argue basically because I've realized my decision not to go to work made the decision for me that I'm not going to get paid. Amen? So our decisions determine the direction of our lives. And if we're going to live a life of victory, we got to think the right thoughts, y'all. We haven't been thinking the right thoughts, y'all. I am so enamored, feel good. I am so enamored with those of you who are fighting like soldiers, holding on to the word of God no matter what. See, because either you're going to believe this word and you're going to walk with it because it got places in there for what we are going through. Didn't the Bible say Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am not going to fear 
any evil, not because I'm so big bad and know so much. That's what it says because you, God, are with me. See, has your faith taken on a personality and character that it can walk you through the afflictions that you suffer? Can it hold you up in your nightmares, in your fears? Will you say, I know the Lord. I'm afraid, but I know the Lord won't leave me nor forsake me. And God says that his people live. He says the just people shall live by faith. And when you think about that, what the word is trying to tell you is the fact that Faith is in what you don't see being taken care of. Faith is promising you evidence, and most of you who have ever been in trouble with the law, you know the evidence is going to get you. So if they got evidence that you under God's cover in faith, then that means you ought to be guilty of believing the word of God. Somebody ought to be able to look at your faith walk and believe that the words coming out of your mouth mean that you believe what God said. Glory, hallelujah. Because it's your thinking that if your thinking makes God a lie, then it's no good. If your thinking brings God into an absolute truth, then it's infallible. Infallible meaning it can't fail. Infallible meaning it's absolute. Infallible meaning it can be dependent upon. So God says in Isaiah 26 and 3, he says that if we keep our mind fixed on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. God has given us a way to have perfect peace. He said, keep our thoughts on him. He says, we shouldn't go through the day thinking all this junk we think. Now, my, my mate realizes I like the news. Now, it's a two-pronged -prong approach to that, everyone listening to me. See, because I'm in my 60s, and when I was little, my parents, who had a solid state TV with the turn dial, they used to keep it on news or westerns. If my father was watching, it was a western. If my mother was watching, it was the news. I don't know about you, but it had an effect on me. Because today, I watch news and I watch westerns. And I do watch a little bit of the police show because I like the Elliot Nets and all the other stuff because Gilligan Island don't come on anymore. But I'm just trying to show you how what you let go into your eye gate and your ear gate goes down into your heart gate and that is what you find yourself inclined to. So if you're inclined to some negativity, you got to fix what you think. You have to fix your thoughts. God says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And he didn't condemn you for thinking negative because he says, for those of you who are not doing what I said, renew your mind daily. He said, here are the things you should be thinking of. So we need to pay attention to what we're thinking about. All through the day, and I, don't, I wouldn't call you crazy, all through the day you should be going, I am blessed. I'm covered by the best. Jesus paid it all. God said he won't leave me. No, for second. This too shall pass. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of darkness, God said he is there with me. Lord, I know that when I see one set of footprints in the sand, you're not leaving me, you're carrying me. So the problems don't come to us to last. The promises come to us to pass. You got to think yourself through this. This is just a test of the emergency broadcast system. 
And just like you got a remote for the TV and you see something that you don't like, that you don't feel, that you can't deal with, change your spiritual channel. Change it to something that says to you, God's got me. The best is yet to come. I ain't even seen my best days yet. You got to begin to tell yourself, self, everything going to be all right. Self, God's got this. Self, he has plans not to harm me, but to prosper me in all things. Self, he wants my spirit to prosper like he wants my soul to prosper. Self, you can keep walking through the valley, but his rod and his staff, they're going to comfort you. Self, see, you got to start telling yourself what the word of God has been trying to tell you all along. We better pay attention to what we're thinking about. Because what we're thinking could start being, it has started being exactly what we are. And some of the things I see us thinking and talking about isn't who God intended us to be. Amen. Amen. All things are going to work together for your good. This problem didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Glory, hallelujah. God has given us the way to have perfect peace. Glory, hallelujah. Keep your thoughts fixed on who? God. Keep your thoughts fixed on who? Jesus. Keep your thoughts fixed on who? Holy Spirit. Comforter, Rose of Tyrone, Lily in the Valley, the Gatekeeper, the Savior, the Truth, the Life. God is. He is the I am that you need. Yeah. Who do you say yeah. he is? Is he just a feeble person that can't handle the current political situation? Is he just a, a power that you don't think can handle these health challenges? Is he just somebody who you call after you think you made it through? Mm. Yeah. After you think you're the one who brought you through. After you think you don't want what's keeping you. After you think you woke you up this morning. Does God just fit in after you? We got to watch what we're thinking. We got to begin to pay attention to how we call those things that are what they are. And how we don't call things we need to be as though they are. Because God says, call those things not as though they are. And I will be well. I will be okay. I will stay in God. I will keep my faith. I will walk in the sacred holy places. I will keep my faith in God holy and sacred. I will last. I will make it through. God and me can do anything. You have to think these things for yourself. See, because remember, um, Proverbs 23 and 7 says this. You're going to become what Ever you are thinking about. So that's another reason to watch what you think. Because if I'm going to become whatever I'm thinking about, I want to be thinking something good. Amen? I don't know about you. Because as a man thinks, so is he. So this, for me, this is going to be a great day. Um, I want to make it clear that I don't believe we ever rise any higher than our thoughts. If you don't think you can spell, you probably won't. If you don't think you can count, you probably never will. If you don't think you can walk, you probably won't. See, these are challenges. And some of you, it, 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 it's a little bit uh, humorous, but like if I was in a car today and the doctor said, he'll never walk again. The devil is a lie. Oh yeah. Because it might take me the rest of my life to learn to walk, but every day of my life I'm going to say, I will walk again. I will talk again. I will be who God wants me to be. And I'm that now and then I will be back in it again. Glory, hallelujah. You are what you think. So, the Holy Spirit knows that the Prince of the Air tries to remind us of all the things. The Prince of the Air is an accuser of the Christian brothers. Yeah. 
to Christian brothers are accused by the devil. Satan yes. says, he, he, he tries to remind you of all your mistakes, all your failures, all your shortcomings. Even when you're trying to change your life, he puts it in the back of your mind. You ain't nothing. You ain't going to be nothing. You don't know what you're saying. You don't believe that yourself. You just want them old church folks down at the Northern Gates to believe that. And some of us live that way. As though if people think we are a thing, then that's enough. But what happens in the wee hours of the night when you're all by yourself and the only thing you got is your God? Can you go to him for relief? Can he have mercy on you? Is his grace sufficient for you in those kind of times? You know when you balled up in a fetal position because somebody broke your heart? Or, or, or if you're so afraid that you ain't got money for the next meal to eat? Or, or, or if something, they didn't, they didn't diagnose you with a certain condition. And now you worry that that condition is going to take you out. Does your faith stand up to test like that? Amen. See, because I don't care what condition comes in this work suit. The body is a work suit. I'm a spirit. I work in this body. One day this old body is going to go away, but my spirit is going to live on. Yeah. So while this old body of mine goes through afflictions, yeah. many are the afflictions of the righteous, yeah. is what the word says. But God has the ability to heal them all. Never forget, 2 Chronicles 4, 17, it's somewhere in there. 2 Chronicles, the, the people who call by my name according to the purposes of God, if they believe in me, turn from their wicked ways. If they humble themselves and pray and, and turn away from their sins, he says he'll heal from heaven, forgive his sins, and heal the land. Now, if God's going to heal my land, even if I got sick, that means I made it through. Yeah. So, so see, some of you who are worried, I don't knock you for being concerned. Because God says pray as well as watch. But don't stop praying while you watch. Amen. I need you to know that God is still in charge and has the weight of the world on his shoulders. And who are you going to call if you get COVID? Are you going to call Ghostbusters? You ain't going to call the hospital, they fool. You need to know how to call on God. Just in case they ain't got no ventilator for you. Just in case they ain't got no room to take you in. Just in case the numbers, and the numbers are terrible out there. Just in case the numbers with all those unbelievers become so high that God has to cure you in the cradle of his arms. Don't forget, Jesus was born in a manger. They didn't put him in no room. They didn't have no room in the end. Jesus came here to save me and you, my friend. Jesus went through it all. And before he left here, he got to give his life for a friend. Because they say, greater, there's no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. So we must all be friends of Jesus because he laid down his life for us. And before he left to go back to be with God, who you and I ought to want to get to be with, before he left here, he went down to Hades. That's hell for those of you who don't know. He went on down to hell and he made sure that those who died in him, in Christ, in God, knew that they too had been invited to the heavenly party. That the spiritual party was not only for those who still walked this earth and had yet to lead to wherever they're going eternally, but it was for those who had already fallen asleep, thank God, that they were invited to. Somebody clap your hands for the Lord because Jesus paid it all on the cross. Yes, he did. So I knew that those of you who I love, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there are some things you're going through, and I said, Lord, help me find something that will make it clear to them whether they sleep or eat or whatever they do, Lord, just use me as your servant. Give me something from Scripture that can help my brothers and sisters. And this is what he did. First word. Y'all better have some pens. Stress. If you are having any kind of stress, here is your Bible Scriptures that's going to help you out. And you ought to think on these things, renewing your mind always in these things. Stress. Joshua 1 and 9 says, 
Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous and tell you do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for I am the Lord your God and I'm going to be with you wherever you go, wherever. Don't forget that. Let's go on. Psalms 52 and 22, 55 and 22. It says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will keep you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Never. Jeremiah 17 and 7 and 8 says, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like trees planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves will always be green. It has no worries in a year of drought. And it never fails to bear fruit. That's Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Listen, I don't care that we worry about what we breathe in the air. Know that if you breathe it in and it gets the cast to connect to you, know that you've got a God that can push it out. Know that if you don't get it pushed out, believe in him anyway and know that you will be with him if you ever leave this place. Yet stress should not be killing you. This thing didn't come to stay. It came to pass. Matthew 11 and 28. Come on, help me, Lord. It says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul in me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a heavy duty scripture. That's a scripture that can carry you because I know a lot of people out here are yoked. And I know that burdens got them weary. But are they turning to the word of God to let their burdens be lifted, make them burdens be light? See, some of us are dragging these big burden bags behind us so much it's starting to bend our back. You don't keep on, you don't get that stuff up off you, you're going to be on the floor. You're going to be on the floor. See, with all this going on, 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 says this. It says, we are hard pressed. And I know y'all look at me. We are hard pressed on every side. But we not crushed. We not crushed. We are perplexed. But we do not despair. It says we are persecuted. But we are not abandoned by God. And we are struck down. But he refuses to allow us to be destroyed. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3 says this, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have the weapons we use, the divine power to demolish strongholds. Are you suffering a stronghold? Listen to this. It says we demolish all arguments, we demolish every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make those thoughts obedient to the word of God. That's what we do. See, see, your mind trying to play tricks on you. It's trying to tell you that that life you got is not a gift. It's trying to tell you stuff like that life should be over because how you the condition you have put it in. God says, I love a messy Christian. I love when you have tried everything you thought and you didn't got to the end of your moves. Because that's when I'm going to show up and show out in you. We serve a good God. Because he tells us about this in Philippians 4 and 6. He says, do not be anxious about anything. He says, but in every situation, by prayer, and petition with thanksgiving, that's the humility, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Present them to him. Lord, I'm, I'm, I, I, got, I can't taste no more. Help me. Lord, they said, uh, my test is conclusive. Help me. Lord, they said, I got it. Help me. Lord, this thing got me down. Help me. Lord, it don't look like I'm going to make it through. Help me. See, because it doesn't matter where you are in it. You got to take it to them about it. 
And then when you do it, he's got something he's going to do for you. We got to believe this word because then it says, present your request to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your soul and your mind in the name of Christ Jesus. Clap your hands for the Lord. Amen. Get a little warm here in all these lights because y'all out there and I'm in here. They can turn the heat down for me. God is my furnace. Amen. Because 1 Peter 5 says, Humble yourself, therefore, under God's almighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. You hear me out there, minister? Humble yourself. Let God lift you up. You hear me out there, uh, songstress? Humble yourself so God can lift you up. You hear me out there, those of you who are afraid to come from one place to another, humble yourself so God can lift you up. We believe in an all-powerful, ever-present, all-knowing God. And I'm, I'm afraid to say some of us are behaving as though he isn't who he is. You got to, you got to pay attention to what you're thinking because it is God who's going to lead you and guide you and protect you and provide for you because it is he who cares for you. Glory be to God. So let's, let's talk about a little spiritual power. Is that all right? Yeah. We can talk about some spiritual power. We doing all right so far? Yeah. Amen. Listen, Psalms, the 68th chapter, 35th verse says, we have an awesome God in his holy place. And he's the God of Israel, and it is he who's going to give you the strength and the power that you need because we are his people. And blessed be God because we're his people. It says in Acts 1 and 8 that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon us. So you need the Holy Spirit to come upon you. You shall be witnesses of Jesus in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, the word says. So some of us who have taken a pause for whatever reason, I'm not even going to say a pause for the cause because actually the challenges in our life today should make you get closer to your family. The challenges that you have in your life should make you get closer to God. The challenge that you're having today should make you more serious about how you live in. How are you living, by the way? Are you living with God or without God? Because there's a difference. See, I understand somebody being afraid who ain't got good faith in the Lord because it's dangerous to be living without God. Amen. Yeah, yeah, see, and you might be thinking that for a different reason. Oh, he just saying that because he a minister, he a preacher. No, you're a lie. I'm saying that because without God, I am nothing. And I don't know about you, you might think you more than me and you ain't got God, but without God I am nothing. And I am all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. God will see me through. His rod and his staff, they shall comfort all of us. God is there to take care of all of us. My brother, it says in Ephesians 6 and 10, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God every day that you may be able to stand against what is coming up against you. Amen. See, I don't know about you. What did you put on when you got up this morning besides the pretty clothes? Besides that water and soap? Besides that three stacks of pancakes? With them over easy eggs? We put on a lot of physical stuff. But do we put on the whole arm of God? Do, do, do I shot my head? Do I, do I put on my breastplate? Do I put on my sandals? Do I put on my belt to keep me together? I'm talking about what do I do for my spirit that's going to let me live in these conditions that we live in? I appreciate people being afraid, but God has information about fear. You don't believe me? I looked that up too. God said in his word about fear, this is what he said. He says in, in Exodus 14 and 14, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That's what he said. 
God fighting for me, I am going to be undefeated. No matter what happens, I win. Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He goes before you, and he will be with you. You are not alone. And he will not leave you nor forsake you. So do not fear or do not be dismayed. We got COVID under cover. I am using it to wake up a world that has tried to remove me from its presence. And I shall, my word shall not remain void. It says, every ear shall hear, every knee shall bow, and everyone will have had a chance to choose God before he comes back in a flash. That's what he said. But he goes on in fear. It says, has he not commanded us to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is wherever you go. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for he is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. When you were scared last night, did you think about God or did you think about your gun? Did you think about your God or did you think about crying? Did you think about God, or did you find yourself yet again trying to hook up with your posse? See, because until you get afraid and go to God about your fears, you're going to keep reliving those fears. Amen? See, so I don't care that we don't realize that fear is not of God. I do care that we don't use the word of God to get over fear. Fear is an acronym, F-E-A-R. False evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. False evidence appearing real. Those letters. Fear. That's what it is. And it's the tool of the Prince of the Air. It's a tool of Satan to keep you paralyzed. To keep you from believing you can come praise God. To keep you from believing you can go to work. To keep you from believing that you can go and eat dinner somewhere. Now I'm not saying be stupid. Somebody is snotting and spitting, and you go and sit right next to them and say, I love God, so they can't let do that. I mean, I believe in God that much, but I'm going to distance myself from somebody snotting and spitting. So I'm not asking you to be stupid, but I'm not asking you to not have faith out See, because you need faith in the middle of the night when you curl up in a fetal position and your heart's been broken and you don't see your way out and life don't look so good no more because you already been diagnosed with something you can't deal with. You need God then. You don't need a man or a woman. You don't need no dollar dollar make you want to holler. You don't need another plate of food. You need a prayer and you need some grace and mercy and you need it quick. Listen, Isaiah says this about fear. I want to get through these fears. God says, for I am the Lord your God, and I'm going to hold your right hand. And I'm going to tell you, stop fearing because I'm going to help you. That's what Isaiah 41 says. Don't fear because I am going to help you. Amen. Amen. And then in 43, Isaiah is full of this. Isaiah 43 and 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. So, I don't know. If you're suffering something here, I pray you go to these words today. I pray you ask God, Lord, help me to find in your word what will give me comfort that will ease my burdens and make them light. And restore me that I believe in you, that no matter what I go through, you got me. That you are with me. You go before me and you will fight for me. See, because until we get to that level of faith, we're all living in constant fear. Amen? And so John 14 and 27, he ensures us, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. So I know some of you have the spiritual power that it takes to overcome what is ailing you. Here's your protection piece. 
we got two more to cover because, you know, I think that sometimes when I keep telling you my story, or when Pastor gets before you and she tells you her story, or one of you guys are up here speaking for the day and you tell, you pick out the story in your life that's going to impress somebody. I think emotionally that charges us up while we're here in this hour and a half of service. But when we leave here, we're still arguing, we're still cussing and fighting, we're still getting high, we're still getting lied, we're still scared, we're still broke, and we're still not serving nothing but ourselves. And that's not where God wants us to be. In this time, God is looking for a church that says, teach us what we don't know, and we will follow. Show us what you will, and we will keep knowing. Teach us how to live, because we don't know how to live. But if you teach us how to live, Lord God, then we will live how you have taught us. So if you're listening to me, I am imploring you that stop the excuses. There is no reason for you to keep your butt torn unless you are choosing to have it torn. You know the difference. And Proverbs says a wise man sees danger and hides from it. So here are the protection pieces. Uh, Psalms 32 and 7 says, God is your hiding place. How many of you hid in God recently? <laughs> God is your hiding place. He shall preserve you from trouble. See, if you're in trouble, maybe you ain't hid good enough because what God hides, nobody can find. It can be right in front of your eyes. Have you ever laid down something at home and you needed a set of keys, a comb, a toothbrush. And you said, I know I just laid it right there. And somebody else walked right up to it and said, here it is. And you were like, I was looking right there. When God hides something from you, you can't find it. You can't find it. And so if you are afraid of something, you need to try to find yourself hidden in God. That's what I'm saying to you. God wants to protect you. Psalms 34 and 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Many are your troubles. Yes. But God wants to deliver you from all of your troubles. Yes. It says he guards all of his bones. Not one of them is broken. Now that's, that's the best insurance policy I've heard of. I mean, God is going to keep me in a car wreck from being broke up. God is going to keep me in a robbery from being hurt. God is going to keep me in a COVID-led society from getting sick, and if, if I happen to get it, it ain't going to hurt me. Amen. God says that what comes out of a man's mouth defiles him. See, we think, I'm going to eat something, it's going to kill me. God says that if you are righteous and you eat something bad, he will keep you he will keep you. See, I don't know if y'all using this word the way this word is intended to be used. We got too many opinions about the word of God. The word of God is not about what you and me think. The word of God is what it is. Now, am I using it like it should be? Because he said, don't add one thing. Don't take away one thing. Do it just like I said it. You know, we get into all these differences. I know in my age category, when they didn't let me eat, that's what we call the fast. Uh, today, people in the whatever age, they call it body cleansing and detox. That's just not eating the junk you normally eat. You just put something else in your body that's going to clean your body out. The point I'm trying to make in saying all that, we all think we're doing something different. We're not. God says that he has the acceptable fast. So when, 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 when Daniel wouldn't eat at the king's table, and the king said, you can have everything, Daniel said, no, just give me some fruit and vegetable, and let me and my man eat the fruit and vegetable, and he'll drink some water. He said, yeah, why? No, let us drink some water. And the king said, okay, in a week, I'm going to test your strength. And whoever is the weakest loses. Because, see, Daniel didn't eat from the king's table, and they say that after the weeks passed, that his body was fit. 
So all of a sudden, what that tells me, brothers and sisters, is you ain't got to keep feeding your flesh. Amen. You ain't got to keep feeding the lust in your life. You ain't got to keep having your way for life to improve for you. Sometimes you don't even need to know what's going to happen or what to do, and God's Spirit will show you. See, I'm trying to talk about these things because we all trying to come in church and we look good and we sound good and we act good for the moment. Just to leave here and be the same old toe up from the floor of people we were before we got here. We can't keep doing that. God's word says, use my word to reprove yourself. You, you reprove, improve. Be like Tide, that commercial. New improved version. Huh? They ain't did nothing but change the words on the box. But it's how you think. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. If you think you can't, you won't. If you think you ain't gonna make it, you're not. If you think you can't do it, you can. But sometimes thinking, I can, I can, because you said I can. I will, I will, because you said I could. I'm going to, I'm going to, because you told me you was there with me and I could do all things through you who strengthens me. Amen. you got to begin to think yeah. yourself to victory. Yeah. you got to begin to think yourself to the win. you got to surrender some of those old behaviors. And some of us got some behaviors. And I don't count myself out. I want y'all to know, I'm a pastor that needs God too. Absolutely. See, because what I'm doing is not lying to you. I'm telling you, if fear got you locked up, faith can't break you out. Yeah, yeah. See, this thing didn't come to stay. This thing has come to pass. But how are you going to do while it's here? Is your faith strong enough? God says, faith of a mustard seed. If you had it and believed in him, you could say to this mountain, be moved from this place to that one. Are you telling the mountains in your life to move? Are you the mountain in your life? See, sometimes it's an inside job that needs to go down. See, I realize that to have a world that's different from your world right now, all you got to do is change you. If you have a different perspective, everything in this world changes. Everything. But what are you willing to give up for God? God gave up everything for you. Amen? Listen, talk a little bit about serving. Whoever wants to be first needs to know they need to be a servant. See, some of us want power, but we don't want no work. We want the idea, but we ain't got no effort behind it. We want things to go on, but we don't support nothing financially, spiritually, or physically. But that's not what God says. He says, whoever wants to be first, this is Matthew 20 and 27, whoever wants to be first must be your servant. Just as Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for us all. What the word of God said. And then it goes first, further to say in 23, the greatest among all of us is going to be the greatest servant to all of us. See, so some people who want to be the leader don't realize that's more work. Amen? Okay. Then I'm gonna say in Romans, I don't wanna I don't wanna believe you because I wanna have a closing statement. Uh, Romans seven and six says this by dying to what once bound you, you have been released from what could keep you, so that you can serve in a new way, the spirit of the holy God, and not in the old way, lip service from the written code. I pick that scripture because it's time for us to stop talking God. Yes. Many of us talk church talk. But we don't live like the church. 
God wants us to be the church. And if you be the church, he will empower the church. I heard a conversation the other day. They said when something in the 60s needed changing, they came to the church. Civil rights was started in the church. Better education was started in the church. The right to vote was put together in the church. Most of the singers that we can remember started singing in the church. Most of the musicians we know that are great today began music in the church. Most of the, the cookers at the funerals and the weddings and the bar mitzvahs start cooking for the church. And most of the people who ever dedicated their lives to anything first dedicated their lives, whether for or by volunteerism, in the church. And it is time for God's church to, to take a fresh start. I told you this talk was a fresh start. It's time for us to take a fresh start. See, because you won't have to worry about what I'm going to do. What you going to do? If everybody take care of their own business, we all going to do something. And then God tells us, he says, victory. Victory comes from the renewing of our minds. He says, for the, this is Deuteronomy 20 and 4. He says, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against any enemies that you have, and he will assure you the victory. That's Deuteronomy 20 and 4. Psalms 3 and 8 says, the Lord comes to deliver you, and may his blessings be upon us as his people. He has told us these things so that in him we may have peace. That in this world we will have trouble. But take heart. He has overcome the world. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? Have you been believing your faith? The way these words I share, and there's so many more, you have to tune in to the Wednesday night Bible study for the com compilation and completeness of the list of those things that will lead us to victory, lead us to renewal, lead us to unity, lead us to friendship, lead us to overcoming, lead us to serving, lead us to faith, lead us to freedom. What are you like? Who are you? Who's reporting you like? It's time out for just emotional shock. It's time to get behind the word and what it means to you. It's time for you to get off your grand imagination and use those talents that he put in you. Because he didn't put, many people today are reminding me of the talent story. They're burying them in the sand. They're sticking their head like an ostrich in the sand. They're so troubled with what they see, they're paralyzed. I don't want that to be the purpose. You can have a fresh start. You got to think yourself to victory. Clap your hands for the Lord, thinking yourself to victory. Remember, God says, fix your thoughts on what is true, on honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. This is Philippians 4. He said, think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And since our mind is the control center of our heart, and every decision we make and action we take begins with a thought. You got to watch what you think. Amen. You got to pay attention to what comes out of that little control center in the middle of your face. Amen. Because once it comes out, you can't pull it back. Amen. It's just like the internet. Once you post it, don't be trying to say what's going to happen to it. Because you can't get it back. You can erase it on your end. Wherever he got sent, it can be there and it can be forwarded anywhere else they want it to go. That's just how it is. So we as a people need to become steadfast. So remain hopeful. Some of you, I'm, I'm glad some of you heard from the very beginning that you got to stand, you got to trust, and you got to obey. 
and then you got to walk in victory. You got to walk in faith. Clap your hands for the Lord. That's, I, I don't really have time to, to put us through the unity, freedom piece. But what I did want to say is, as long as you turn your life over to God and you renew your mind daily, all will be well with you. Amen? Yeah. God bless you out there. We, we don't want to keep you anymore this time. But I'm sure it's something I said. We gave out a lot of scripture. Go over those scriptures and remind yourself that you too can have a fresh start. You too can begin again. God wants you to. He says, a wise man falls seven times, but he gets up every time. So if you fall, never think you can't get up because you can. And if you bound, use the word of God to get free. And if you yoked, he said, turn to me, for my yoke is easy. If you have your mind fixed on God, God has a mind that's ready for you. God bless you. God keep you. Remember, if you want to win, thank the Lord and keep him, for he's ever going to keep you. God bless you, and we'll see you.